Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Bulldog Insider. Two weeks ago, I asked Jeff Tedford if the team's goals would change after an 0-2 start. He said no. The only thing that won't happen is Fresno State won't go undefeated. Well, Fresno State will also not go winless in 2019. Julia Lopez joins us now to take us through last night's victory over Sacramento State. Yeah, thanks, Andrew. So these two schools are approximately 175 miles apart, and they've only played each other three times prior to last night. So Crazy. let's check out their fourth meeting. Yeah, the Dogs hungry for that first win on the season after opening up with two close losses against USC and Minnesota. Fresno State coming off of a bye week early in the first quarter. Jorge Reyna finds Jalen Cropper for his first completion of the game. The former Sanger Apache and Buchanan Bear had three catches for 18 yards. On third and ten, Reyna is going to have a short pass to Josh Hokett, who gets taken down just shy of the first right here. So they'd have to settle for three. Cesar Silva comes in, but he misses from 49 yards out, and we've got zeros across the board. Still in the first quarter on second and 12, Dogs with the ball. Reyna finds a wide open Zane Pope, and that is good for 36 yards. And after Ronnie Rivers puts Fresno State into good field position, this happens. Reyna to hoke it. He's going to bounce off a few guys right here, takes it in for the 14-yard score, and that caps off a 10-play, 93-yard drive. Fresno State on top, 7-zip. But the Hornets answer right back. Kevin Thompson over the middle to Marshall Martin, and he's gone. 47-yard score. They'd miss the extra point. Dogs on top, 7-6. Now, Reyna was under a lot of pressure. He was sacked three times. He did do a good job keeping some plays alive, but it was, the, was it the offensive line or was it Sac State's defense? They're very multiple, and uh, there's a reason why, you know, they held Arizona State to whatever it was, 19 points, had a shutout last week. I mean, they're, they're really good. I'm going to look at the film and see where – uh, where we broke down, but Jorge was under a little bit of pressure as far as uh, pass protection was concerned. And so, um, you know, but the good thing, he didn't, he didn't turn it over. You know, he didn't, he didn't throw any interceptions, and he didn't turn it over. Um, you know, so, I mean, that, that was a good sign. What wasn't good was Fresno State's kicking game last night. After Reyna got sacked, they lined up for a field goal, but Silva misses again, this time from 35 yards out. Not a good feeling out there. But what about four minutes to go before halftime? This was pretty. Reyna lets it fly, and Carrick Weepall, the JC transfer, makes the beautiful diving catch good for a gain of 46. Reyna's longest completion on the night. The very next play, they keep it on the ground this time. Ronnie Rivers comes near side for six, and it's 14-6. Fresno State, good job, Andrew, shooting that. The Bulldogs with some trickery late in the second quarter. Reyna to Zane Pope. Pope looking to throw it, but instead, Sac State does this. Isaiah Butler strips the ball, runs it back for 40 yards, gets taken down by the laces on Fresno State's 28. Reyna hustles back. So Hornets trying to find the end zone, but it wouldn't come easy. Kevin Atkins with a sack for a loss of two. Then on third and seven, Thompson to Isaiah Gable. Jaron Bryant with a huge hit, but that's good for a first down. So same drive. First and goal from the two, B.J. Perkinson gets in for the score to pull into the Hornets. Go for the two-point conversion. The kicking game not going well for them either. Marquis Johnson runs into a wall named Justin Rice. So heading into the break, Fresno State is on top 14-12. In the third quarter, Ronnie Rivers back to receive. They'd have a lot of fair catches this year, but this time he takes it out, shakes off a few guys, gets loose almost down the line, but gets pushed out of bounds on the 41. A nice 28-yard return. But remember that Sac State defense? Yeah, they can do that. They're all over the place. That would have been a touchdown for Pope, but Isaiah Butler with a nice pass breakup. So once again, the Dogs have to settle for a field goal. Silva lines up from 37 yards, misses again his third on in the night. Andrew, what does that do to a kicker's mindset? Well, his confidence isn't there right now. Five of six on field goals before last night, 0 for 3 last night. Hopefully he can figure things out this week. Yeah, the Bulldogs want to forget about the third quarter. It got sloppy, sloppy, lots of mistakes, dropped balls, and neither team was able to put points on the board in the third. In the receiver group, you know, we're like a family. We keep each other up. We let each other know. Uh, we let each other know uh, if someone's doing, if someone's lacking, like we just, we get on their tail about it. We, oh, we always have each other back about it too. In the third quarter, there wasn't a lot going right offensively, but we just kept playing. Nobody, nobody gave up. Everybody kept plugging away. And um, 
and found a way to win. And, uh, you know, that's, that's really important. All right, the Spark Club, or the Spark Plug, was number nine for the Bulldogs. Senior running back Josh Hokett. But before we get to him, this was a huge play in the fourth to get the offense moving. Third and 24, Reyna connects with Wheatfall. Gets taken down on the two-yard line. Good for 29 yards, but that would be the end of the third. Start of the fourth, Hokett's going to punch it in. But instead of Silva, they put Asa Fuller in for the extra point. He misses, and it's 2012 Fresno State. Sac State hanging around still. Thompson to Isaiah Bailey over the middle for the 18-yard touchdown to pull them two and of course they go for it and uh, they get it off the shuffle pass the two-point conversion BJ Perkinson gets in and we're tied up at 20 but about that spark plug Hokett was running so hard that his Bulldogs decal was coming off his helmet Andrew have you ever seen that before no but a couple of plays later he had a brand new decal on it kind of was sticking out as you could see right there somebody ripped it off his helmet goes to the sideline at some point gets a new decal by the way, he ran so hard, he ran right out of his equipment. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, second and goal, Reyna with a quick release to Darion Grimm, and that's his second touchdown on the season. Silva would get the extra point, go up 27-20. Fresno State's next drive, Hokett bulldozes his way through and gets in from 14 yards out, his third touchdown on the night. David Carr was the analyst last night, and he made a good point. Hokett was the closer in this game, came up clutch while Reyna was the starter. Speaking of, he gets his first win at Fresno State as the starting QB. Bulldogs take it 34-20 for their first win of the season. Jorge Reyna passed for 312 yards with two touchdowns, no turnovers, and he threw to nine different receivers. JC transfer Carrick Wheatfall had three catches for 98 yards. Josh Hokett was a scoring machine. He had three of the Bulldogs' five touchdowns, 94 total yards, 72 rushing, 22 receiving. It means a great deal. Um, however, it's a great team win. Um, a lot of our guys stepped up. A lot of our, a lot of our fans realized, hey, we have multiple weapons. We have a great team, and when we're clicking together and executing, we're unstoppable. It was a good win, but we still have work to do. We will be back tomorrow to fix all the details, all the mistakes that we had in the game, and prepare for the week next week. Brought to you by Sierra Pacific Orthopedics. Scott Bemis here alongside Cameron Worrell. And uh, Cam, it certainly was not easy. No. It was not pretty. <laughs> but it was a win, right? It, it was a win. You know, I think we all, myself included, we expect because this team, this Fresno State football team, won 12 games last year that they would just know how to win in 2019. That's not the case. There are a lot of new pieces on this roster. So, it, it wasn't pretty at times. It was 20 to 20 in the fourth quarter, but this version of the Fresno State Bulldog football team got their first win. That, that means a lot moving forward. And uh, we heard Julia mention it, but Josh Hoke, it was a big reason the Bulldogs won this game. Yeah, he was running so hard that the decal came off his helmet. That never seen that. Yeah, it kind of felt like maybe the old days under, you know, Pat Hill, right? <laughs> Things getting sloppy out there. He would have left it hanging off if it were Pat Hill days. There's no extra decals on the sidelines <laughs> back then. Why do you think he was featured so heavily in the second half? Well, you know, Sac State really loaded the box the entire game. That's why we didn't really see this Fresno State offense try to establish the run. But... Eventually, you know, because Jorge Reyna was pressured so much in the third quarter, they weren't moving the football. They had to go to another option. And look, Josh Hoke came in and, you know, talking to him, he feels more physical because he played linebacker all offseason. <laughs> he, he got some physicality back. He was the answer this team needed. They needed to find a way to take some pressure off of Reyna and move the football without having Jorge run the entire show, and Josh Hokett was the answer, luckily, for that offense last night. Yeah, when I went out there Tuesday at practice, by the way, earlier in the week, uh, I saw Josh taking some, some extra drills, going through one of those uh, things that has, like, the, uh, the foam pads on yeah. the side of the, that yeah, I'm sure are, are a lot <laughs> tougher to go through than right. just, just foam, and it obviously paid off yeah. for, for the wrestler, right? You know, so, all right, you mentioned him. Let's talk about Jorge Reyna yeah. a little bit. You know, the numbers look pretty good, 26 of 39, 312 passing yards, a couple touchdowns thrown, 36 yards rushing as well. The Bulldogs moved the ball consistently in the first half, hit a little lull there in, in the third quarter, but the thing that I think that they can, can take a lot of confidence from here is that in the fourth quarter, when they needed a drive, they needed to make a big play, Jorge Reyna was able to lead him down the field. Yeah, and he did it to Carrick Wheatfall, who really saw his first action as a Fresno State receiver. A J.C. kid, 
got hurt on a kick return against USC. He stepped up in the pocket. Carrick Weefall ran a great dig route to pick up a third and 24, and they eventually cashed that one in. So it looked sloppy in the third quarter. They were sending a lot of pressure right in Jorge Reina's face, and their answer which was an answer that could work because they had a physical advantage on the perimeter. Let's attack those one-on-one -on -one matchups. Well, Sac State did such a good job getting pressure, and hey, they held their own on the outside one-on-one -on -one last night that we didn't see that offense get into any sort of rhythm in the third quarter. It wasn't until Hokett started running the ball that Reyna calmed down and was able to find Carrick Wheatfall for the third and 24, and then Darion Grimm for the touchdown. Yeah, when, when you've lost a couple uh, uh, of times in heartbreaking fashion, you're going to take any win. So uh, this is a positive <laughs> yes. for them to get a win over Sac State. Yep. But got to ask you, Cam, I mean, this is Sacramento State, an, an FCS program out of, out of the big sky. Yes, they've been impressive so far this year. Uh, you know, they, they hung with Arizona State uh, deep into the fourth quarter. A uh, couple blowout wins over an NAI school and then Northern Colorado to the big sky conference. But still, this is an FCS program, and they hung with Fresno State for three and a half quarters so how concerned should the red wave be about that I, th I think there's concern and, and the concern really stems from like that I'm not concerned about Jorge Reyna I know fans are a little concerned about him because what they see is Jorge Reyna throwing incompletions getting sacked and they put the blame on him I understand that but their concern stems from the fact that this is a young football team. There are 15 guys who got their first start as a Division I football player. A couple more who got, you know, not their first start, but their first start at a new position. So there are a lot of young pieces. And when you have young pieces, they don't know how to execute all the time. They make mistakes. You miss three field goals and an extra point. If you put those on the board, this is a comfortable Fresno State win. Nine times in the red zone last night, they only cashed in five times. If you put points on the board every time, like the Fresno State team that we saw last year, this is a much, it looks a lot better on the score sheet. So I'm not too concerned. There's going to be growing pains on both sides of the football with the way this roster is put together this year. But as we continue to see Jorge Reina get more comfortable with those receivers and what looks like a, a very lethal Josh Hokett one two Ronnie Rivers punch to take some of that pressure off of Jorge, I, I think this team will be fine when they open Mountain West Conference play. Yeah, really good to see them get the running game going late in that game yesterday because yep. that has been a concern. Now, the big concern, I think, coming out of, out of last night's game, you mentioned some of the new guys. Well, Fresno State breaking in a new kicker this year, Cesar Silva, and yep. he had a rough night. And, 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 you know, when you're a kicker, you're on display for everybody, right? <laughs> Your misses are on display. So um, here's my question. Uh, with Silva struggling a little bit and then Asa Fuller coming in and struggling a little bit as well with the missed extra point, could we see maybe going forward Jeff Tedford getting a little more aggressive, uh, you know, on fourth downs and things like that in an opponent's territory? We definitely could, especially if they continue to run the ball the way it looked like they established last night in the fourth quarter. But Jeff Tedford's not going to make decisions based on, you know, whether he believes on this kick, you know, Silva or Fuller can make it. What he feels like gives them the best chance to win in that moment is the decision he's going to make. So I don't think he's totally going to throw the book out and he's going to start going for it on fourth and seven instead of kicking a 42, 45-yard field goal. That's not in his DNA. But I think because they have Jorge and Josh Hokett and they can attack a defense multiple ways on those short yardage situations, that it opens up more for him to make that decision. But He's going to stick with what has got him here this far in his career, and I don't think his philosophy will drastically change. But I like to think, and I think we will see a little bit more aggressive in that 45 to 50 field goal, field goal range where, hey, we might see Josh Hogan try to punch it forward for two yards or so. And, and let's keep in mind that uh, Silva was really good in, in the first two yeah, games. We're singing his, his praises the first two Yeah, yeah, weeks. made his, his first start ever at kicker, right, in the Coliseum, and, and he came up clutch. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I think he's going to bounce back, uh, hopefully. All right. So what's up next for the Bulldogs? Kind of an interesting trip here at this point in the season. They're going to travel to Las Cruces, New Mexico, the southern part of the state, uh, near El Paso down there, and uh, to battle New Mexico State. An 0-4 team, uh, they've played a brutal schedule so far this year. Uh, they played at Washington State, at Alabama, uh, hosted San Diego State, coming off a 55-52 loss <laughs> to New Mexico. Um, Anything to be concerned about with this trip if, it, you know, if you're the Bulldogs? I mean, the fact that a team put up 52 points yeah, in a loss, yeah, you know that they have some explosive ability in that offense. 
anytime you have young guys going on the road where it's not the Coliseum, where it's not an electric environment, there is the potential for uh, a less intense Fresno State football team. But you squeeze by against Sac State. You have a lot of young players who got a lot of positive quality reps. I think they'll be ready to go when they, when they go to Las Cruces. But like I said, when you have this amount of young players, a quarterback just in his fourth start in his Division I career, there's always some concern when you travel and play a team like New Mexico State. Yeah, and uh, we'll see if Jorge Reyna can get his first road win now after nice. getting his first career win uh, at Fresno State. All right, that's Cam Worrell. Always appreciate him coming by here on The Insider.